The newton coates formulas can be used to integrate data, and they can also be used to integrate an analytic function, f of x, if it's easier to numerically integrate than to find the integral analytically. When using the trapezoidal rule and the Simpson's one-third rule, estimates for the error can be obtained, and these are reported in the textbook. The estimated error for the trapezoidal rule is proportional to h squared, and the estimated error for Simpson's one-third rule is proportional to h to the fourth. The estimated error for Simpson's three-eighths rule is also of order h to the fourth. If we substitute b minus a, the length of the domain, divided by n, then the trapezoidal rule is proportional to one over n squared, and the error on the Simpson's rule is proportional to one over n to the fourth power. Clearly, the error goes down as n, the number of data points, increases. Earlier, we combined two finite difference approximations of a derivative that contained different step sizes to obtain an estimate with a reduced error. We can do the same thing with integrals by applying a different method of Richardson's extrapolation. In this application of Richardson's extrapolation, we combine two different approximations that both have order of h to an even power, and that provides us with a different approximation that has an error of the order h with that same even power plus 2. If i is the true value of the integral, and i sub h1 is the value of the integral estimated with an interval of step size h1, and i sub h2 is the value of the integral estimated with an interval size h2, then we can calculate similar estimates from, for the integral using the i h1 and i h2 integrals, each of which have an error associated with them that's proportional to either h1 squared or h2 squared. So to apply Richardson's extrapolation, for example, we might combine two methods that both have an error of the order h squared, such as two estimates of the integral using trapezoidal rules. The first estimate uses the integral with h1, and the second estimate uses the trapezoidal rule with h2. The constants that multiply h1 squared and h2 squared in the error are the same. Note that for the trapezoidal rule and Simpson's rule, this constant is actually independent of the step size h. So we can combine these two estimates to eliminate c. If we use an h1 that's equal to 2 times h2, that is, we cut the interval size in half when making the second estimate, then we need to combine the first and second estimates for the integral by taking 4 thirds times the integral estimated with the smaller interval minus 1 third times the integral estimated with the larger interval. And that should eliminate c. Without showing the derivation, we can now be assured that the error terms are of order h to the fourth. Similarly, if we take estimates that have an error of order h to the fourth, such as could be obtained by Simpson's one-third rule, then we need to combine them this way. We take 16 fifteenths of the integral estimate with the smaller step size minus 1 15th of the integral estimate with the larger step size, and we end up with an estimate that has an error of order h to the sixth. We can continue and develop an estimate for the integral that has an error of order h to the eighth, and so forth. So Romberg integration uses these formulas to get very high precision for composite trapezoidal rule estimates. We start with estimates that have errors of the order h squared, and we do this by calculating the integral using the trapezoidal rule with a step size h, with a step size 1 half h, with a step size 1 quarter h, and with a step size 1 eighth h. Now each of these has an error estimate of order h squared. So we combine them in pairs to develop three new estimates that now have errors of order h to the fourth. And then we combine those estimates to develop two estimates that have errors of order h to the sixth. Finally, we combine these last two estimates to get a final estimate with an error of order h to the eighth. If we wanted to, we could continue to use trapezoidal rule estimates with smaller and smaller fractions of h and do additional extrapolations here. 
Notice that this is going far beyond what we could obtain if we had simply taken the estimate of the integral with the smallest step size. Suppose, for example, that our step size is 1 tenth, or 0.1. The estimate of the integral using the step size 1 eighth h is of order 1 64th of 0 0.01, or 1 64th of h squared. Starting with just these initial estimates for the integral, and combining them using Romberg integration, we can arrive at an estimate that has an error of order 10 to the minus 8. That is far, far smaller than any of the errors from the original estimates in the first column. If we use Romberg integration, we can obtain very precise estimates using simply the trapezoidal rule. We can organize these integral estimates into a table. We start with an interval width h and a number of intervals n, and we continuously cut the interval width in half, which doubles the number of intervals, and we do this to create m rows. Those m rows will then give us m columns of integral estimates with different orders of the error. The combination in the final column will be the one with the smallest error, which is of order h to the 2m. When we perform Romberg integration using beginning with equally spaced intervals, and we cut the intervals in half at each step, the formulas used to combine the integrals from the previous step have a pretty pattern where the numerators are all a perfect square of an integer power of 2. This is 2 squared, this is 4 squared, this is 8 squared, etc. The power of Romberg integration is that by increasing m, which is equivalent to increasing the number of subintervals, we can make the truncation error as small as we need to, but only using trapezoidal rule integration. This is particularly useful for analytical functions that are very difficult to integrate analytically, because we can calculate the value of the function at as many points as we need to. If we have real x, y data, we may be limited by where the data are collected. So far, we've talked about different methods for increasing the integration accuracy. The Newton-Coates formulas change the order of a polynomial used over the interval in order to improve the accuracy. The rectangle rule is a zero-order polynomial. The trapezoidal rule is a first-order polynomial. Simpson's one-third rule uses second-order polynomials. And Simpson's three-eighths rule uses cubic or third-order polynomials to increase the accuracy. We can also increase the accuracy by changing the number of points that are used to define the subintervals. We saw this when we took each of the Newton-Coates formulas and composed composite rules based on them. The Romberg integration is another method that takes advantage of using additional points in the domain or subdividing the subintervals to improve the accuracy. There is still one more method that we can use to improve the accuracy. And that's not to add additional points to the domain or add powers to an approximating polynomial, but rather select where exactly in the domain we calculate the value of the function. We'll cover this method in the next video.